Lair of the Mounties. We present episode 31 in Blair of the Mounties, being the concluding part of Lord Waverton's dilemma. Employed by Lord Waverton, a member of the British Cabinet, to investigate a mysterious burglary at Lord Waverton's home in Devonshire, Blair finds himself involved in a web of international intrigue. In the suave Professor Schwartz, head of a continental spy ring, Blair finds a worthy opponent who entrusts Blair with a startling message for his employer, Lord Waverton. Back in his London office, Blair prepares to deliver the message to his chief. I'm surprised to see you back so quickly. Surely the job isn't finished. Finished, yes, it's finished. All but the judge's decision. What? What do you mean? Is anything wrong? Miss Guest, I thought I was used to surprises in this game, but yesterday I ran into something that is just a little too big for me. Gracious, what do you mean? I have decided to set down the facts on a record in case, uh, well, in case anything happens to me. Get your notebook. Why, why, yes, here it is. All right, get these notes down and stop me if anything isn't clear. All ready. Take this down. Deposition for record by James Henry Blair, private detective in the city of London. Look here, Inspector, you haven't commi- murdered anybody, have you? No, but I came very near it. Carry on, Miss Guest. On July 22nd, I was consulted by the Right Honourable Lord Waverton, Minister for the Air for Great Britain. You know the particulars of the assignment, Miss Guest? Yes, I've got them. All right. Now, at Coombe Seaton, Professor Swartz called on me and made a certain proposition. Why the nervous man? You mean to say he offered to buy you off? Oh, no, nothing like that. He has more sense. Just hold on a minute, Miss Guest. I'm coming to this proposition of the professor's. I want to discuss it with you. Afterwards, you can make a resume in your own words. Goodness, it's just like old times. Uh, too much so to be comfortable. Miss Guest, you're acquainted with Lord Waverton's private history. You mean his marriage and all that sort yes, of thing? Yes, you know that he married Marion Delancey, wife of Captain Abel Delancey, five years ago? Yes, but of course Captain Delancey died in the war. Delancey, the first husband of Lady Waverton, is still alive. What? Are you sure? Then you mean the present marriage is illegal? Yes. Furthermore, this man Delancey is a spy working in the employ of Carl Swartz. Good heavens! You think he can prove this? Swartz is too experienced to bluff. I feel pretty certain he has the goods. What does Swartz want as the price of withholding this information? Of course it's sheer blackmail. Yes, it's blackmail. He wants a draft of the air defense plans and immunity from arrest until he's out of the country. Oh, and you mean to say he has the effrontery to make this proposal to Lord Waverton in England of all places? Yes, Swartz has got <laughs> plenty of nerve. Also, he knows where he stands. He holds in his hands the power to wreck Lord Waverton publicly and socially and to destroy his happiness. Oh, but I don't know. It's a terrible thing, of course, but it's no fault of Lady Waverton's. Swartz has laid himself open to a charge of blackmail. I think it's clumsy. Wait a minute. You haven't heard it all yet. There's something more serious. Oh? Lady Waverton herself is implicated in this. In what way? She's working with the professor's gang. She helped to plan that burglary, and she knows her former husband is still alive. Oh, you mean that Lady Waverton is a spy? That's the size of it. Oh, it's incredible. Yes, but there it is in cold language. That's what I have to lay before Lord Waverton. You mean you're going to give him these facts just as they are? I don't see any other way, Miss Guest. I have no choice. That's what he employed me for. But he didn't expect you to run into such a terrible thing as this. No, I suppose not. Have you arranged the appointment? Yes, there's a cabinet meeting this morning. His lordship is expecting you at two o'clock. I see. That gives me three hours. Anything else on this morning? Yes, there's a lady wants to consult you. Who is she? Wouldn't give her name. She telephoned twice. I told her to come at eleven. It's just five minutes after. All right, if she's there, send her in. I'd like to get my mind off this thing for a bit. Will you come this way, please, Inspector? Inspector Blair will see you. Good morning. Good morning. Will you sit down? Thank you. What can I do for your ladyship? Oh. Pardon me, Lady Waverton. I frequently seen your picture in the society journals. Oh, yes, of course. Inspector Blair, my husband tells me you are in his employ in connection with the Coombe Seaton burglary. Indeed. Please don't be evasive, Inspector. You know very well that is the case. I'm sure you'll forgive me, but I cannot discuss such a matter with you. Very well, I'll go further. Don't worry about evasions. I didn't come here to ask questions. I came to tell you certain things you ought to know before you see my husband. You make it very difficult for me, Lady Waverton. But you must listen to me. I know that you have received certain information concerning my first husband, Captain Delancey, but you don't know all the circumstances. Lady Waverton, I've done my best to avoid this discussion. If you have anything to say, I'm compelled in courtesy to hear it, but... All right. That's all I want. I know that you had an interview with Professor Swartz yesterday. I know he told you that my first husband, Captain Delancey, is alive. Were you also aware of that fact? Of course. 
Don't you see that's the cause of all this horrible misery I've been through? You spoke of Professor Swartz. Are you well acquainted with him, Lady Waverton? You know very well that I am. Don't you see how desperate my position is? It was this man, Swartz, who brought back my former husband when I thought him dead and used him as a means to ruin my happiness. When did this occur? Two years after my second marriage. Since then, I've been exposed to the most horrible form of blackmail. I've worked for this man, Swartz, as the price of his silence, and now it's all useless. I know you have the information of everything, and in two hours my husband will know it. Don't you see how terrible it is? Terrible indeed, but what can I do? Oh, can't you help me? I'd do anything to save my husband from this. Don't you see it will ruin him? I have plenty of money. I can make it worth your while. You're a clever man. Can't you find a way out? I'm sorry indeed, but money is of no consequence in this matter, my lady. But you're a man, aren't you? You've got a wife of your own, I suppose. Don't you know what it would mean to her? Haven't you any human sympathy? Yes, I quite understand. Believe me, it's not a pleasant duty, but it's still a duty. Duty? How I hate that word. It's all my husband talks about, this everlasting duty. What about happiness? Yes, I know. I don't want to preach, Lady Waverton, but you're up against the most sinister force in the world, the intrigue of great nations. Individual happiness means nothing to these men, and in dealing with them, our own personal interests, however precious they may be, have to be put aside. Yes, I see it's no use. I suppose I ought to have known better than to come to you like this. I'm sorry, but I see no way out except to tell the truth. Oh, well... Sorry to have taken your time, Inspector. I must think of some other way. Goodbye, Lady Waverton. Goodbye. Miss Guest, quick, where's Jarvis? He's downstairs. Give me that private phone, quick. Hello? Hello, Jarvis. Blair speaking. See that car outside? Yes, Lady Waverton. Listen, take the little car and keep her in sight. She may do something desperate. I don't know. Watch her. I hold you responsible. All right. What's she going to do? I don't know, Miss Guest. You didn't tell her, sure. Oh, Lord, she knows it all. The woman's frantic. It's a horrible thing, Miss Guest. And the trouble is, she gave me the check on that sort story. You mean she confirmed it? Yes, poor unfortunate woman. She came to try and avoid the news getting to Lord Waverton. I tried to stop her talking, but she went ahead and confirmed everything. The whole thing is hateful. What a terrible business. I wonder what she'll do. Do you think she'll go to her husband? No, she couldn't reach him. Jarvis will watch her, but one never knows. Well, do you get that transcript of the evidence? Yes, here it is. But listen, Inspector. What is it? How about this, Professor Swartz? If Lord Waverton refuses his demand. Then we'll arrest Swartz, of course. But he's got a big plane. If anything goes wrong, he could be out of England in 20 minutes. No, he couldn't. Don't you see, Miss Guest? Swartz would never have risked this shot if he hadn't been up against it. How do you mean? Why, his big plane went to an aerodrome in Bristol for light repairs and fuel, ready for a getaway. We seized the plane. The police are watching his house. That's why he played his last card. When he found we'd cut off his means of escape. I see. Yes, it's all set. And even yet, I'm hanged if I know what'll happen. The decision is up to Lord Waverton. It's a terrific situation. You surely don't think you comply with this man's terms? I don't know, Miss Guest. An hour ago, I'd have said no. But when I realized what those two mean to each other, I began to wonder. There are lots of things he could do. Swartz only wants those plans. He'll get big money for them. Enough to retire. Waverton could have the scheme changed. One guess is as good as another. Can you see him condemning his wife to imprisonment as a spy? Gracious, I don't know. Well, I'm going to lunch. At two o'clock, I'll hand this report to Lord Waverton. That's all I can do. I have an appointment with Lord Waverton at two o'clock. Yes, sir. He, he, he's expecting you. Uh, uh, this way, yeah. Inspector Blair. Inspector Blair to see you, sir. Come in, Blair. Thank you, sir. Well, Blair, I didn't expect to see you back so soon. Anything important? Very important, sir. I made a report. It's very short. Will you read it, sir? The last paragraph particularly. Certainly. But, uh, tell me, this man Schwartz. You saw him? Yes, I saw him. He made me a proposition. A proposition? You come to me with such a thing from a man such as that? Yes, sir. Will you read his proposal? Uh, good heavens. Why, why, this is... This is absurd. What do you mean? This accusation against my wife. It's... it's Lord Waverton, this statement is true. True? Do you know what you're saying, man? Perfectly. That my wife is a traitor to her country, working against my interests. Are you sure? I must have confirmation of this. You only have this man's word. I have more than that, sir. Then where is it? Your wife, Lady Waverton, came to see me this morning. She knows I have this information. Lord Waverton, this thing is true. You understand I'm working for you. Whatever your decision may be, 
I shall never divulge it to a living soul. And this man demands the air defense plans in return for keeping this matter secret. How could I depend that he would keep his promise? I believe he would do that, sir. Oh, what a terrible decision. Do you realize what it means? All my work for England. All my happiness. This fellow's words are merciless. Everything. Everything that I hold dear. Perhaps I'd better go, Lord Waverton. Leave you to consider. No. I'll settle this thing now. At once. Everything I hold is dear. No. You overlooked one thing, Blair. What is that, sir? Something more important than happiness. The duty I owe to my country. And your decision, sir? Send word to the county police. Instruct them to arrest Professor Schwartz. Very good, sir. You have heard episode 31 in Blair of the Mounties. Don't fail to tune in for the next episode in the series.